Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to continue introducing pointers by showing you how you can use them as output parameters. So I've got this main.cpp here. It's already got some code from another video introducing pointers. I'm just going to continue down at the bottom right here. I'm not going to use any of this code or any of these variables out here. All right, so let's talk about output parameters. All right, so you know with the return statement, a function can return a value, right? So value is pretty vague, right? I could return an int, a char, a double, a string. I could return a struct. I could return an array. I could return a vector, right? I could return a lot of things. So think about like returning a vector, for example. A vector can store multiple values. So to say that with a return statement, you can only return one value is kind of deceptive because that one value could be a vector and it could have say 10,000 values in it, right? All right, <clears throat> excuse me. So let's think then about alternatives to return statements, right? Like let's say I want to return two integer values, uh, but I don't want to package them up in a vector. Okay, well, I could return one via the return statement, and the other one I could return via an output parameter. Okay, so you might have seen output parameters before. So an output parameter is a parameter. Okay, so that would be a local variable declared in the header of a function to accept and store an incoming argument that returns a value from the function. Okay, and I'm going to put returns a value because it's not going to use the return statement. Okay, and so there's two main ways that you might have seen this done. So the first way is via a pass by reference variable. Okay, pass by reference variable. Right, so this might be something like uh, int and percent um, result. Right, so this could be a parameter. Uh, result is an alias to another variable that is, say, declared in main or declared in the calling code. And the second way is via a pointer. Okay, via a pointer. So with a pointer, we're going to get the memory address of some variable that was declared in main or in the calling code. And once we have the memory address, we can go there and we can access the memory, okay? And as long as our pointer variable is non-constant, we can modify that memory as well. So you might have heard something like arrays are passed by reference because a function that accepts an array can modify the contents of the array. That's true. Arrays are passed by reference, but we don't put an ampersand on the name of our array parameter because what's actually being copied behind the scenes is a memory address. An array is just a pointer. In another video, I'm gonna do a demo explaining what I just said, arrays are pointers. Uh, but in this one, we won't focus on arrays, but I just wanted to mention that if you've heard before that arrays are passed by reference. They are passed by reference, and that's because what's actually being copied is the value of a pointer. All right. So here's the example we're going to do. Let's say we have a function called divide. Okay, this is a very simple function. And divide accepts two ints and returns their result of division and mod. We'll get their remainder, okay? So I want to return these two values, the result and the remainder of division. Okay, so I could return one via a return statement, right? But I'm gonna actually return both of them via an output parameter, okay? So the calling code is gonna have to give me two memory addresses, okay? So two pointers that I can use to update variables in the calling code in order to send back an output, two outputs from this function. All right, so I've got uh, int, result remainder. I'll call the function passing in 13 and 11. 
and the address of result and the address of remainder. Okay, so oops. So in this this function call here, okay, I'm passing it addresses. So I'm doing this approach right here. I'll put stars by it. This is the one we're doing. Okay. If I was doing pass by reference, I wouldn't have these ampersands on here. I would put them on my parameters in my header, my prototype for divide. And just to emphasize, that would be two different uses of the ampersand. Okay, I have little notes up here you can take a look at uh, describing that. All right, let's carry on. So 13 integer divide 11. How many times does 11 go into 13 evenly? One time. So when I print out result, I'm going to expect to see one. Okay, I'm going to expect to see one. Divide is going to update result indirectly via a pointer to result because I'm giving divide the memory address of result. Okay, so that's how this is going to get changed. Divide is going to change it because we're giving divide the memory address of result. And I'm also going to do the same thing for remainder. All right, so 11 goes into 13 evenly one time with remainder of two. So we're going to let divide assign two to remainder indirectly via pointer to remainder. And when we print out remainder, we expect to see two here. All right, let's define this function. Its return type is void because I'm not going to return anything via the standard return statement. The first two parameters are of type integer, the numerator and the denominator of my division. And then the next two are going to be pointers to int. Okay, so int star, I'll call this one res and I'll call this one rem just to call them something different so that when I take some notes about the scope of result, remainder, res, and rem, you'll know exactly which variable I'm talking about. All right, so divides, not a very complicated function. Okay, it's not even very long. The contents of what res points to is assigned numerator divided by denominator, and this is integer division. Okay, so let me type out how I read this. It's very important. The contents of what res points to is assigned numerator divided by denominator. Okay, the contents of what res points to. What does res point to? Okay, res points to the address, which is the third argument to this function call, right? One, two, three, one, two, three. So res points to result. Okay, res points to result. All right, next one is going to be the contents of what rem points to is assigned num mod denominator. Okay, and I can type this one too. The contents of what rem points to is assigned num mod den. All right, so let me take a little bit of notes and say, what is in scope of divide? When this code executes from this function call right here, what is in scope? Okay, so int num, and I'll write contents of int num, 13, right? 13 is passed by value, so it's copied into num. Okay, also in scope of divide is int den, denominator, and its contents are 11. 11 is passed by value, so it's copied into den. Also in scope is the pointer to int res, whose contents are the address of result. Okay, so let's keep track up here. I have what is in scope of main. Okay, so I have int result contents. Okay, this is tricky. Since I'm not initializing result to anything, I'm just gonna put question mark garbage, right? And I have int remainder contents garbage as well. Okay. Let me just make up a memory address for result so that we can use it in order to kind of complete our scope description down here for uh, res. 
So let's say result address is 0x2000, uh, okay? And let's say remainder's address is 0x3000, okay? So when we pass the address of result into divide as the third argument, we're actually passing in 0x2000, okay? So right here, res, its content is 0x2000. The content, oops, I put that in the wrong spot. All right, so let's do the same thing for rem. It's a pointer to int, and its content is the address of remainder, which is passed in as the fourth argument, which is hex 3000. Okay, and I want to just emphasize I made up these addresses, right? I won't actually know what they are at runtime, and they're likely going to change every time I run the program. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm making them up. All right. So divide can see num, den, res, and rem. Okay, it can't see result and remainder, but it can modify result and remainder from main because it has result and remainder's memory address. Okay, so result and remainder are being passed by reference, so to speak, because we're giving divide their memory addresses. So these changes right here, these are going to actually cause the contents of result and remainder to be updated. So when this line of code executes, the contents of result are going to change from garbage to two, or excuse me, one. 11 goes into 13 evenly one time. And this line of code, when it executes, is going to change the contents of remainder from garbage to two, because uh, we talked earlier about how 11 goes into 13 easily one time, and the remainder of that division is two. All right, all I need now is just a prototype above my function call in order to compile and run this code. All right, and there's result one and remainder two. So result and remainder were modified by divide because we passed in their memory addresses. We dereference pointers that store those memory addresses in order to indirectly modify result and remainder outside of the scope of main. Okay, so this is called uh, using output parameters because we've got four parameters of divide. The first two store inputs and the second two store outputs, okay, outputs of this function that is going to be used by the calling code. All right, so that's one application of pointers. This is kind of the way that we would use reference variables before we had reference variables, right? So this is kind of the pass by reference C style, okay? The pass by reference uh, that we know about from option number one is more the C++ style of what we just did. All right, I hope that helps you understand a little bit of an application of when we might use pointers. And thanks for watching the video.